Alrighty, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the PCB design rules tutorial series that I'm doing. So the next uh, design rule up on our list is going to be trace clearance. And let's see, electrical, uh, this is actually, an, an, this type of rule is found in the electrical category. So if you hit design rules and you hit electrical clearance. And so what Altium defines clearance as is it defines uh, the minimum clearance allowed between any two primitive objects on a copper layer. And so by primitive objects, it just means anything that you can make into copper, basically, or anything that event eventually gets made into copper. So if you just click in the little rules um, editor and you click on the clearance rule, what you end up getting is this little table right here. So here it lists all of the types of primitives you can have. And actually you can, there's a little bit more, you can go advanced, but don't worry, simple will be, will be just fine for our purposes, right? You can see here it has like track, SMD pad, through hole pad, via, copper, pour. This is copper means copper pour, and then text, which is kind of interesting. I guess you can make, technically make text out of uh, copper. And I guess it'll end up just being more like a trace. Um, so basically what this is doing in a kind of this little uh, illustration here kind of gives a good explanation for what it is. It's just the distance, the the minimum distance between any two of these, uh, like copper, like I said, primitives, right? These things that can be made out of copper that are allowed on the board. Um, so what that end up ends up looking like is so like looking at. Um, well, here's a great one right here. So see these two traces. So if you look at the difference or the distance between these two traces right here, this is going to be uh, governed by our our clearance rule, right? And the same thing goes for if this trace were to run closer to this pad, like how close this trace could get to this pad, how close this pad can get to this pad matters. Um, if I said like, let me see if I like placed a via down, like how close this via can get to this pad um that's kind of what those that's what those rules kind of govern so anything like i said anything that's going to be made out of copper is going to be governed by these these uh pcb design rules okay so let's see the next thing the uh well here what i we'll just look at what i have mine set to um like so, so i made this table and i have them all set to five mils and the reason I did that was because, like I said, if you go on Sierra Circuit's website, what they actually list is minimum trace and space, right? So that refers to the clearance between the copper primitives, right? So they have their set at four mils. And keeping up with that theme I talked about, about giving headroom and not working at the limitations of your you know, technological capabilities. Uh, we're gonna give them a little bit of headroom, right? So we're picking five mils as a you know amount of space uh, between our uh, you know amount of clearance we want between our our copper primitives, and then hole I just put zero because um, that actually be covered by a different rule eventually. Um, but yeah, so I I think that'll be hole for zero is fine, and I I did a little bit of googling around to find that one as well, um, and that's like what a lot of like forums suggested so i i think zero is, is fine um, and we'll get into like other there are a lot of other rules that kind of set that um so you'll actually never have to worry about encountering this will never be a problem if it's set to zero because there are other rules that attached to every every hole um so that'll be just fine okay so the next one we'll get into is going to be hole size so this can kind of refer to this is kind of a set uh, i would say a setup rule or a this rule works in conjunction with the next rule on our list actually the smallest annular ring and where these kind of come into play is um like there could be cases where you need to drill holes for your pcb and and that could like say say a mounting hole or something and there won't actually be copper on that hole um, but a lot of times these uh, like hole sizes, they'll definitely refer to when you when it comes to making vias, right? So, like I said, what minimum hole size is? If we'll just click on an example via right here, did I place one right? Here? Okay, so I have a via down here. So if you click on it, um, let's see where it says hole size right now. So mine is set to ten mils on this one, and then the annular ring. Uh, what that refers to actually, I don't know if I can show. So you see this little red 
ring around here. So that little me middle gray piece is the whole. And let me see if I can go in a 3D layout mode too. Okay, so this little, the gold brass looking, copper looking piece, uh, this little flat disc thing on the top is the annular ring. If you can look, you can see underneath it, they allow you to see through the, through the actual PCB. Um, this little gold plated part on the inside is referred to as like the plated through hole, right? So this is the actual drill diameter that we have selected. And then the annular ring is the top part around the annular ring. Okay. Uh, or sorry, the top part around the hole, right? So this, it's this distance that is between the edge of the through hole and then the very ed outer edge of the pad, right? It's this donut. Okay. It's the, it's the donut. So I hope that's very clear what the annular ring is. Um, so let's go into the design rules and see what I have set as my minimum hole size. So design rules, and this is going to be in the manufacturing section actually. So we have hole size. So my minimum hole size is set to seven mils and then my maximum is set to 1000 mils. So if we go to the Sierra Circuits website, they'll show, let me see, smallest mechanical drill diameter, right? So this is set to, this is actually 5.9 mils. And then the smallest laser drill diameter is five mils. So, for, so I kind of just rounded this up to six. And what I did was I looked at the smallest mechanical drill diameter and um, I started at the, I used that as my like baseline, right? Cause even though the smallest laser, like you technically use a laser drill and go smaller, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that will actually cost more. I haven't talked to the fabrication house about that. And that's, that's this kind of also a good point too, is you want to have like a good working relationship with your fabrication house. Cause what you kind of do is you'll get, get in contact with the fab house before you actually start your designs. And just be well acquainted with all the different design rules that they have, especially because sometimes these tables might not be 100% current, or they might just be running some type of. They might have some deal or some non deal, but I don't know. They might have. There might be a different reason. Like understanding their actual ma uh, manufacturing process. Like some of, some might say, oh, for our laser drills, it costs extra, or uh, the you know the smallest mechanical drill diameter they cost the same or something like that. So for that reason, I just went with the smallest mechanical drill diameter as uh, my num as as my like baseline for the rule, because um, I know like this is going to be probably at least the same price, if not cheaper. So starting at a baseline of 5.9 mils, um, I then again working with the theme of give them some headroom. I gave them one mil of headroom right there on the seven mil, and then again with the the whole thing on on the maximum. Um, there's definitely actually a limit to this. Um, like I can think like physically like drilling a hole in the board, like the, with referring to like structural integrity of the board, I don't, I don't think you can just have this giant donut hole in there and it'll be okay. But, uh, like a thousand mils is definitely within that region and you don't need, I mean, I don't, I can't imagine why you'd be drilling holes larger than that unless you have these really hefty mounting screws or something. So yeah, so keeping with the theme, I gave them seven mils of headroom. Now I want to talk about though the actual via um, sizing that I chose right because if you look at this this via right here I have a hole size of 10 mils and I have a an annular ring or a, a pad size sorry of 20 mils and the way I got that is actually I there's this great book online. Maybe I'll link it if I can find it. It's called The Hitchhiker's Guide to PCB Design. And kind of what they say is, you know, I'll just show you my notes for my VIA specification, right? So looking at the VIA specifications, right? So we want a 10 mil nominal um, hole size. And this is uh, just like a, this is just a very common number you'll get. And again, this is like a, this is kind of like my preferred trace width size is I don't, I don't want to be routing. I don't want to make VIAs super, super tiny if I don't have to. Um, so like I said, starting in 10 mil nominal hole size, it's a fine number, it's well above their, their minimum capabilities. Because I choose a comfortable above the minimum hole size, 
and then I say we do seven mil for additional tolerances. So there's actually a lot of tolerances related to drilling, right? You have the actual location of the drill. The whole size has a tolerance too because it's not always on the money. We're actually working with very small holes here, right? 5.9 mil is very tiny. Um, and then there's like an additional tolerance for, there's something else. Um, see, I don't know if I, actually have no i don't i have it i have it up but i don't think i they, they might list it in here but the actual anyway so yeah so i have just a total of seven mil for the additional tolerances and then for their minimum annular ring, I think they list um, their, their minimum annular ring should be listed on there. So it looks like they have a one mil annular ring requirement. And so I just gave them three mils for again, more headroom. So basically what this kind of means is you start with 10 mils and then adding all of those tolerances for like errors in the manufacturing process, you end up with about 17 mils. And then to, in order to get a, a minimum annular ring of three mils, you have to add more than three. So that gives you the it's referred to commonly as a 1020 uh, via. So um, basically, what it was, in the worst case scenario, your drill hole is 17 mils, and then you end up with a 20 mil pad, which gives you a minimum of worst case scenario, you have a three mil annular ring. So that's kind of how I, I chose that value. And this is like I just set up this, and we'll get into this later, but I set this up as a, a via template. Um, but for the rules, like I said, if if you have to end up having to change your your via, like go down going down to like seven mil was the limit that I chose for me. Um. So yeah, and I think that will pretty much do it for this part. Um, next time we'll be going over like the silk to solder mask clearance and some other stuff like that.